Hello, my name is Dr. April Heike Eakins. I'm here to talk to you today about core concepts of theosophy. As a student and a teacher of theosophy for over 10 years, I frequently find students coming to me perplexed. They seem to be able to grasp theosophy in terms of bits and pieces, but they lack an all-over understanding of the key assumptions and fundamental ideas of theosophy. This presentation has three purposes. The first of which is to acquaint you with an all overview of those key assumptions and fundamental teachings in source theosophy. The second purpose is to provide an acquaintance with the literature available for study. The third purpose is to suggest a connection. A connection between a worldview and a way of living. A commitment to theosophical studies can lead to a commitment to a theosophical life, which is a path of spiritual growth and development of profound significance. It is my hope that from this videotape, you will be stimulated to further investigation of the authenticity and profundity of theosophy. A study guide is available with this presentation for your further investigation and inquiry into the nature of theosophy. Let's begin with a definition of the word theosophy or theosophia. The word itself is Greek and consists of two parts, theos meaning divine and sophia meaning wisdom, the divine wisdom. H.P. Blavatsky indicates that the word was used by the Alexandrian philosophers who were called Philolathians or lovers of wisdom. The Neoplatonist Ammonius Sacchus used the word theosophy to describe his school, the eclectic theosophical school, and his purpose was to show that this theosophia was the fountain source from which all religions sprang. He also attempted to reconcile religions under a common set of ethics that was based upon this theosophia. The first assumption on which theosophy rests is the idea that the ancient wisdom has always existed and that this wisdom points the way towards truth about the nature of man and the universe. Theosophia is the fountain source from which all religions have sprung. And it is contended that eventually all religions will reunite towards this common source. It's been known by numerous names in other cultures, such as Gnosis, Gupta Vija, or Brahma Vak. But regardless of what it is labeled, the meaning is still the same. H.P. Blavatsky perhaps puts it best. It is the essence of all religion and of absolute truth, a drop of which only underlies every creed. To resort to a metaphor, theosophy on earth is like the white ray of the spectrum, and every religion only one of the seven prismatic colors. Ignoring all the others and cursing them as false, every special colored ray claims not only priority, but to be that white ray itself and anathematizes even its own tints from light to dark as heresies. Yet, as the sun of truth rises higher and higher on the horizon of man's perception, and each colored ray gradually fades out until it is finally reabsorbed in its turn, humanity will at last be cursed no longer with artificial polarizations, but will find itself bathing in the pure, colorless light of eternal truth. And this will be Theosophia. In one sense, the ancient wisdom really reflects the knowledge that is innate in all of us. Plato said that learning is really a remembering or a recollection of what we already know. But in another sense, Theosophy contains the deepest knowledge about the operation of nature's laws. William Kwan Judge puts it most succinctly.
Theosophy is that ocean of knowledge which spreads from shore to shore of the evolution of sedient beings. Unfathomable in its deepest parts, it gives the greatest minds their fullest scope, yet shallow enough at its shores, it will not overwhelm the understanding of a child. Now, every religion is dual in nature, having an inner and outer teaching. The outer teaching is exoteric, or that which is given out to the public. But the inner teaching is esoteric, and only the elect or the initiated are privy to that, those teachings. Even in ancient times, there were secret learning societies, and they had their esoteric teachings. In the West, we had the mystery schools of Plato and Pythagoras, in Egypt, we had the Hierophants, and in India, the initiated Brahmins. Every world culture has its esoteric teachings. And in HPB's masterwork, The Secret Doctrine, she tries to prove there is an interconnectedness to the esoteric side of all religions, and then to trace that back to the lineage of the ancient wisdom. Now, although the ancient wisdom is universal in scope, it needs to be expressed through every age based on the times. For instance, um, there seems to be a misuse of any great teaching over time. The purity, the essence of the teaching is lost, misunderstood, abused. And so great spiritual teachers will reappear periodically in different cultures to reintroduce the ancient wisdom in a way that expresses the needs of the time.